The sequel to City Skylines is finally here, and though there's plenty of similarities between City Skylines 2 and its predecessor, the game also feels very different. So today we're going to be looking at some beginner tips that will help you save heaps of time in City Skylines 2, as well as get you off to a really strong start. Now I will mention that with me recording this prior to release, thanks to Paradox for sending me a game key, there may be some changes to the game by the time you receive it. So do bear that in mind while watching this. And of course, if there are any major changes, we are going to be covering that on this channel, so make sure to subscribe for more content as well. So first, which map should you start on? Well, it definitely comes down to personal choice, but if it's your first time playing, I recommend Sweeping Plains. It has all the connections which you'll want to try out in your playthrough, as well as plenty of space for building. On top of this, you also have access to fast wind speeds, so if you're wanting to stay away from coal power early game, this is good for that. And it also features plenty of resources to get your industry going in this game. That being said, regardless of which map you choose, unless you want to deal with natural disasters, I highly recommend unchecking that box on the next screen. And though it's tempting to have infinite money or all items unlocked, I wouldn't personally recommend them because the game is pretty good at holding your hand through the early stages and getting you on your feet. And from there you can progressively unlock new buildings and services at your your own speed and that's the way the game should be played in my eyes. Once you start a map, you'll want to consider your city layout. Now you don't need to be too concerned at this stage about it, but you will want to have an area designated for industry and one for residential just like in city skylines, which shouldn't be nearby to one another. Just to clarify, your commercial zoning should also be nearby to your residential and this will be more apparent as your population grows. And if Paradox haven't fixed the brightness or auto select of the commercial zoning overlay when you're playing this, just click I. It's the hotkey which will allow you to remove the overlay whilst you're planning the city at this early stage and you should be able to see where you're placing everything. Now whilst building your city layout, it's good to get into the habit of using the terrain tools to flatten the terrain you're using or change heights. Now make sure to change the brush size accordingly and also its brush strength, otherwise you may need to wrestle with it but it's going to be really useful for when you're laying out all your roads and working out where you want everything. Speaking of roads, they are the arteries of your city. Like in City Skylines, the game offers several varieties of roads as well as placement tools for the perfect layout. Given you'll be spending a lot of time placing roads though, I highly recommend going to your settings and inputs and setting a hotkey for changing tools. I've set my hotkey to R as I use my mouse for all my zooming functions so I don't need R to zoom in. This allows me to swap between tools whilst building and makes it much easier. Also, consider the advanced input for elevation dragging. This makes changing elevation of roads on the fly much easier even if it does take a little getting used to. All you need to do is place down a road with this enabled and then at any point during the placing you can hold down your left mouse button and drag up or down to increase or decrease the height of the road piece. And speaking of road tools, one that is invaluable early game is the grid tool. This allows you to quickly and easily build grids for zoning areas within your city. You can use it to make the most of your limited space in the early game so that you can start planning out your main city further away. But don't use the grids exclusively, it creates a very boring looking city. So instead you'll want to use curves and bridges to create different layers to your city to keep the layout interesting and we'll be talking about that in a later video. Now in my opinion the first development point should go into advanced road services. Firstly it gives you access to the road maintenance depot which is super important for keeping traffic flowing as it reduces the chances of crashes. But more importantly to me is that it allows us to place and replace road markings, signage and traffic lights, allowing for better flowing traffic as well as beautification 
through the use of trees, pavements, and grass verges. Also, note that you can take an item, such as the crosswalk, and then right-click on any crosswalk on a road to remove it. You can also mix items together, such as trees and grass verges, to create a unique look. On some of the maps, wind power is just as feasible in the early game as the small coal power plant, with them being cheaper to build and run versus the power plant if you can find a plot of land that can produce 5 megawatts of power. Now the perk of this is they produce no ground or air pollution for your city, making everyone happier, though you are only able to support low voltage wires so you won't be able to sell any extra power that you're generating back to the grid. That being said, the difference from the income of exporting power and the income saved from using wind power and scaling up your production is negligible in the early game. So for me, happier citizens is the way to go and where possible I do use wind power. And by the way, if you are enjoying the chilled music that we have going on in the background, do check out my Spotify page. And if you're a content creator, you can actually use this music yourself copyright free. The links are in the description below. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is early game money. What I would recommend here is reducing the budget to services that you don't rely on that much in the early game. So if you're producing a lot of electricity, why not reduce it? Or if you have a lot of parks and public transport, but a small population, then reduce the budget to them. You can always relocate the money to that service as it becomes used more and more. This tip isn't really to do with starting off in Skylines, but one that I think is very beneficial to anyone who's wanting to play on a less powerful system, or if they're playing on a powerful system and like me, were using a 4K screen. I think this comes down to the optimization of the game and I'm hoping that it will be optimized fully by the time it goes to full access. If you're playing the game and it seems to be lagging, downscale your screen if you're using a 4K screen like me to 1080p. I noticed a huge change in performance despite having a beefy PC myself. And if your PC is really struggling, turning off motion blur and depth of field are going to be settings that can really help get the more FPS out of your gaming setup without having to lower all other settings. Now back to the game tips once your city reaches level 2, you can start playing around with taxes. These are great for changing the demand of zones. If you want more residents, reduce the taxes. If you want to discourage industry in your city, hire the taxes for the industry. This gives you a much better level of control when it comes to developing your city in the early game. Retaining walls can add a nice touch to your city's aesthetics. However, they can be a little bit difficult to get used to. To build them, use the terrain tool to create two height levels of terrain next to one another. You will then place a road down along the top piece of terrain and run another road alongside the cliff edge from that piece of road. The section underneath will then be filled in by a wall, but only if the road continues to run along the top section of the terrain. You can also add retaining walls by going from the lower piece of terrain and then cutting into the top piece of terrain. We're kind of just switching it around. We're doing the opposite here. This is a great option to add just a little bit of detail to any cliff sides or neighborhoods that are running up along a side a hill or even coastal roads as well. And when it does come to growing a city, one of the most important things that you can do is keep your citizens happy. This plays a big part part of the leveling of buildings. So to do so, make sure there's good transport links available as well as parks and services nearby. And one thing that I totally forgot to do and recommend you don't do yourself is when you unlock communications, don't ignore the radio station. I totally missed it. I saw the post office. I didn't see the other tab with the radio station. To, so do use that. It's a great way to improve your citizens' happiness. But there you are, guys. I think that's 12 or 13 tips that will help you get started in City Skylines too. If you are enjoying my content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and obviously do subscribe if you want to see more. And if you have any other beginner tips you'd like to share with the community, let us know in the comments below. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solo Clips patrons, James Owen, Fireflesh, and Treble, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star, and That Dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.